Hello, everyone, and welcome to the coffee lecture, Love Your Data Steward, Research Data Management Support at the University of Vienna. My name is Teresa Kalova, and I am the Data Steward Coordinator at the Vienna University Library. And uh, together with my colleagues, Michael Feichtinger and Monika Bachmann, we are very excited to talk to you about our new Data Stewardship Program. So at the beginning, I will uh, open the, the event by, by talking about uh, the way our data storage program is um, designed and I'll give you a bit of context information. And then Michael and Monica will talk about what it is like being a data steward in the life sciences and the humanities respectively. So research data management at the University of Vienna um, has been around for quite a while. We have been offering support services for our researchers and helping them with their data management needs for many, many years, starting around the year 2008. And for the past several years, these services have been um, organized by a university-wide working group called Research Data Management, which is coordinated by the university library. And our RDM services are very much a joint effort of many centralized units of the university, such as the university library or the computer center. And until recently, we have been offering mostly generic RDM support, as in not domain specific. And we have found uh, this to, to be um, quite a gap in our services, and we've decided that we want to start working towards closing that gap in uh, that we set up a, a new data stewardship program. So let's talk a little bit about um, what this term data steward actually means, as in what it means to us. This term has been around for a while now, it's been thrown around a lot. But currently, there is no um, there is no real agreement in the community as to what data stewards are, what their roles are, um, or what um, their specific functions and tasks should be. Uh, so the definition that we have been working with comes from uh, a project that we have been involved in for the past three years called Fair Data Austria, and it's this one right here: that data stewards at research institutions are making connections and opening channels of communications, communication between researchers, policymakers, software developers, and infrastructure providers in order to enable researchers to successfully implement research data management. And the way we set up our own data stewardship program is again, largely based on work that's been done within the Fair Data Austria project. Um, where we developed models for data stewardship at Austrian research institutions. And these models are in turn based very much on best practice examples from other countries, such as the ones, the very well-known ones from the Netherlands or Scandinavia. And our data stewardship program is perhaps a bit unusual than the ones that you might be familiar with in that it has two major components. On the one hand, we have a data steward network with a coordinator at the university library, that's me, and our embedded data stewards at selected faculties and research centers. That's uh, currently Monica and Michael. But the second part of our data stewardship program is a dedicated certificate course data steward, which uh, is a formal further education program that both our data stewards take part in, but it's also open internationally and anyone can, can sign up for it uh, in order to prepare for this new role. And the image that we typically use when we talk about data stewards uh, is this one on the right hand side, and that is uh, the image of a bridge, because data stewards typically have a connecting bridging function and they connect researchers with research infrastructure. So as I was mentioning, this is the way our data steward network looks currently. Um, we have, uh, as of now, two data stewards. Um, we have uh, Michael who works at the Center for Microbiology and Monica who works at the Faculty of Philological and Cultural Studies. And um, our third data steward will be joining us in March. 
and she will be working at the Faculty of Life Sciences. And the four of us very much represent the pilot phase of the data stewardship program of the University of Vienna, which has been funded by the university for the next um, three years. And the main tasks our data stewards take on uh, is, of course, supporting researchers within their uh, disciplines and also offering and designing training courses, doing needs assessments, and also working towards requirements engineering. And I'm going to let Michael tell you a little bit about what it's like being a data steward in the life sciences. Okay, so if you stop your screen sharing, I will take over. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, so my name is Michael. I'm currently a data steward at the Center for Microbiology and Environmental System Science. So how did I become a data steward? So I have done in the last few years my PhD in chemistry, more specific in uh, protein biochemistry, so coming right from research. And after that, I kind of saw three opportunities for me what to do. So the first one was uh, going for a postdoc and an academic career. The second one uh, was kind of becoming a staff scientist, but unfortunately, there are not that much, pos that much positions in Austria for staff scientists in the uh, field I was working in. And so I came across the, um, the, job, uh, the job announcement for the data steward. And what I really liked about the position of, of, of a data steward was that it was still working in science, but with kind of with less precarious working conditions um, that I was involved in the co-development of a new role at the university that we are kind of forming this data steward role, that there is a lot of uh, teaching and education involved in the role of a data steward and that's something I personally like and also that we are involved in various different projects so that's kind of a yeah, nice thing. So the center I'm working at is uh, as I already said the center for microbiology and environmental system science. It's located as you can see in the picture in the new university building uh, for biology uh, and the research focus of the center is mainly the structure function analysis of microbial communities in environmental and medical systems. And we are about 200 scientists and staff at the center. And the center is divided into four divisions, focusing on, on different areas like uh, computational systems biology, then there is a division of micro, microbial ecology, environmental geosciences, and terrestrial uh, ecosystem research. And additional to that, and also uh, important from a data stewardship perspective, we are also operating the life science compute cluster. And uh, we're having the joint microbiome facility, which is in principle a sequencing facility producing huge amounts of RNA and DNA sequencing data. And um, what you might already expect is that we have a very kind of limited uh, kind of data at the center. So most of the data that, that operated with here are DNA and RNA sequencing data, a lot of uh, microscopy images, um, then something I would call chemical imaging, so all kind of spectroscopic methods, and uh, of course code. And but um, as we have this quite uh, homogeneous types of data, it offers for me an easy opportunity to kind of uh, de uh, develop workflows that are center-wide and that we can apply for all research groups all over the center. And this is also something I want to talk about now, about the case study. So it's about organizing and structuring data because uh, during my first months, I um, started with a niche, uh, an initial needs assessment and according to that, the top priority was kind of uh, reorganizing and structuring the internal data management of uh, each research groups. Um, to do that, I well, we have chosen to go for a bottom-up approach that we, we start with individual research groups and then try to expand uh, the system to, to other groups and also then establish a center-wide structure of organizing and structuring data. And so the goals of this of this kind of first project are that we have uh, over all the groups clearly defined and comprehensible folder structures and file naming conventions. 
um, an improvement of the metadata accompanying these, uh, these files and the documentation and overall a general verification of, of research data. And my role as a data steward uh, in this whole project is uh, giving educational input, in particular in this uh, research group meetings um, where we work out these concepts together. And then of course, uh, consultation and assistance throughout all the group meetings and um, a transfer and upscaling of the results uh, in one that we make up in one group meeting to all the other research groups. And to kind of get, give you an idea of how this, this can, can in, in one case look like. So for example, this is how the folder structure is, is looking kind of right now. So uh, people have folders with their names on it and then there are um, arbitrary named folders in there. And what we are going for is then instead of something that is uh, based on sing single persons, uh, something that is based on projects and then having clearly defined data structures that makes it easy um, for future researchers also to kind of go back to the previous data and uh, see uh, very easily, okay, where can I find what and also all this data then will have accompanying metadata and proper documentation. And therefore, I'm going to hand over to uh, Monica. So my way to my current role differs from Michael because I have I have graduated in the humanities. I'm a Germanist, but I don't feel like one because my professional identity is librarian. Uh, I have been a librarian for about 22 years now. I have attended the data librarian course uh, at this university, and I also worked for five years as a data manager at the Central Institute for Meteorology and Geodynamics. Um, I was self-employed as an IT project coordinator. I'm interested in forestry. I study um, sorry, next. Uh, I study re regional development, and that sounds like many different things. But looking back, all those things have two aspects in common. I bring people and information together. And I do kind of translation work, uh, for example, between software developers and non-techies. This is um, yeah, a common thread. And basically, there are not many things that do not interest me at all. So maybe I'm really in the right place now because my faculty is huge and diverse. It's not only the largest faculty of the university, but it also has roots in the really in the founding year of the university in the so-called artistic faculty. Um, so we have about 800 researchers, um, including project staff and uh, 14 departments. You see them listed uh, below. We have at least five locations within Vienna. <laughs> so it's not that easy to reach all the people at once. And we also have teacher education. So we have many um, departments that offer studies in teacher education. Um, we have philology and area studies from A as in African studies to T as in Tibetan studies. And basically we address the world's cultural heritage in various forms with a focus on language and literature. And we also have uh, together with other faculties, a uh, digital humanity focus. The issues that I was consulted about so far were mainly two areas. First, um, support with data management plans, and second, long-term archiving of web applications, such as digital editions, um, elaborate project websites, and so on. And the use case I want to talk about is a bit different, but I want to show it is still typical for the role as a data stewardess in my point of view. The University of Vienna has a long-term research initiative, the Tibetan Manuscript Project Vienna. It was started about 25 years ago, and it consists of ongoing projects. Um, its goal is to document, preserve, and research endangered manuscript collections of Tibetan canonical literature in the Himalayan borderlands. Uh, and the PI of the current project 
travels to remote areas of Nepal and makes digital photographs of manuscripts. And to do this, he sometimes even needs to install solar panels to have ele electricity. So it's a really a huge effort. This is one of the images he, he took. Uh, the images are published at the Buddhist Digital Archive. It's an international community uh, project, let's say. And so they are public, but the, to, to store the raw data, and we're talking about several hundred thousand image files, the project bought their own file storage. So that was not official university equipment, and it was not, not supported by the university's computer center. It's not really an unusual situation, but it's uh, a precarious situation somehow. So the data needs to be secured beyond the project period, and the researchers need continuing access, even if some of them are not employed by the university, for example, between projects. Um, but in fact, the FPI wanted to move to university equipment, uh, but he had somehow, let's say, landed at the wrong department and he hadn't received a satisfying answer. So it was kind of uh, in the middle. And then he heard about me and contacted me. And I simply organized a meeting with the right department in the computer center. And we found a good solution that fulfills all the needs of the project and is also okay for us. So. Why is, what is the special thing? The special thing is that it's, a, I think, a spectacular project and the images can't be easily retaken, maybe in, in some cases not at all because the manuscripts might be lost. Um, and But typical, I think, is that the institutional solution was there, but the researcher didn't know about it. And my role was to make the right connections. And also what I, I want to stress is that what I really love about this role is the learning from each other. It's not my role to go there and somehow enforce a university policy, but it's it's really learning from each other. And, and I really uh, appreciate this. <laughs> and so you see, without a data steward or data stewardess, it's somehow a maze because we offer so many services from different departments. It's easy to lose. Uh, the overview, but with the data stewardess, you know, there's one go central go-to person, you can ask them and they will connect you with the right department or right person. So if you also want to become a part of the data steward community, you can also attend our certificate course course that starts again in October. And so here are our contact details, so please get in touch and we are open to questions now.